Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I'm going to share a story with you. And then I'm going to, I'm going to give you a challenge. Uh, listen, I was at a nightclub when I was probably about 21, 22, maybe 23. And this was years before, about four or five years before I gave my heart to the Lord. Wasn't thinking about the Lord then. So anyway, I was I was all the way into sin. <laughs> and, and this nightclub... Uh, I used to, well, I still shoot pool, but I shoot pool at different places. But at this place, I learned to shoot pool at a nightclub. And it was a nightclub slash bar. And I always stayed in the pool section. I shot pool morning, noon, and night when I wasn't working. And at night when I was. And here's the comical part. One of the guys, because a lot of the guys would be trying to help me learn. And that was really nice because they were good players. I mean, they were better than some of the people I see making money now as, you know, on, in competition. But anyway, so here I am learning how to shoot pool. And one of the guys was always trying to give me pointers. And I won't mention his name. But he was a married man with children. Now, he was never coming on to me. Never did, and I never came on to him. But one of his many, 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 many girlfriends, yeah, mistresses, decided to confront me in the ladies' room and ask me what was going on with me and her man. Number one, it wasn't her man. It was another one. He was another woman's husband. Okay. And she was ready to get down right there in the bathroom and fight me over something that didn't even belong to her. Think about that. Think about how silly that is. You're going to fight somebody for something that doesn't even belong to you. Number one, I wasn't interested. So I let her know. I calmed her down and let her know, baby, don't you don't have to worry about me. My interest is in them pool, t them pool balls on that table. Uh, I'm not interested in no married man. Anyway, so she calmed down and it was over. Now, when we contend for the faith, when it comes to God, the things of God, the righteousness, the holiness of God, God's ways. How far do you go to fight to hang on to your man? Hmm? Yeah, I'm bringing it down to real human terms. How hard are you willing to fight? Are you willing to be alone? To establish your walk with Christ. Are you willing. To read the word. On a daily basis. And hang with nobody but the saints. And get deeply rooted and grounded. Until you establish a connection with God. That you can stand on. Not just believe in. I'm talking about a no so experience. Where you and God have really connected. Are you willing to fight for that? Are you willing to squeeze your lips together. So that you don't even ruin your witness. Since you represent him. You won't even ruin your witness. You will bite your lip before you let a cuss word. Come out of your mouth in public. Yeah we slip in private once in a while. But you do everything in your power not to do it in public. And then you get to the point where you don't do it in private either. Because you're fighting tooth and nail. Or are you battling with your flesh? Like that woman was ready to battle me over some nonsense. The difference is when you battle with your flesh... You are battling for your eternity. 
this woman was battling over some nonsense that didn't even belong to her in the first place. And she's bat trying to battle somebody that wasn't even interested. I wasn't even a threat to her. But guess who was a threat to you? Your own flesh, your own nature, and Satan. And all the temptations that you allow yourself to enter into. Hmm? You know, as much as I loved hanging with my sister, I had to stop going to her house for a season until her cigarette smoking was no longer a temptation to me. I had to stop hanging with a lot of my family members and friends because they, like I, cussed like sailors. But since I was fighting tooth and nail to stop cussing, I couldn't be around people who cussed for a long time. I might do a little holiday visit, but I couldn't hang with people doing what I was trying not to do. Because if you do that, it weakens your resolve and you find yourself doing. Because input, output. You hang around people who cuss. Before you know it, you're cussing. And it gets looser and looser. And the more you do it, the more comfortable it becomes. You have to, more, you have to literally destroy the flesh. You have to burn it up. You have to... You have to beat it to, du to, to the dust. You have to kick it to the curb. All your desires, all your will, your mindset, your, at your nasty attitudes, everything that you have to deal with. You pray over that. You read the word over it. You battle it. You rebuke all of that in the name of Jesus. You don't say, oh, well, no biggie. I'm just starting anyway. God understands. You know, we're in grace. He'll forgive me. The way that woman battled, that, that's what's really on my mind. The way that woman battled for that man, how much more should we be battling for our faith, for our ways of righteousness, for God's intimacy with us. How much should we be scratching and digging for God? We should hunger and thirst for God and his righteousness. Not for a piece of tail. Not for someone else's husband or someone else's wife. Not for that chick sitting at the bar. Because you shouldn't be there. You're trying to stop committing adultery. You're trying to stop committing fornication. And you're going to go where everybody's doing it. What sense does that make? A lot of people wonder, well, why am I so weak? Why doesn't God deliver me from this? Why doesn't God help me? Common sense. He did put some noodles right in between the two uh, temples with, you know, the little bone structure up in here. There's some noodles in there. You know, they, they look like a bunch of macaroni. That's called a brain. And he put it there also for us to think and to reason. Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 1, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as wool. Though they be like crimson. Come on now, listen. When you are trying to walk with God, you cannot talk out of both sides of your neck. It's either one way, or go on, do what you're going to do. It's one way. I'm not even going to say the highway because that's not the highway. That's the low way. God's way or the low way. You just go do what you're going to do. Don't even bother naming his name. Because you have no intention of lining up with him. But if you do, you better put on your boxing gloves on. 
better put on the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith. You hear me? Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You put a, you hold that word in your hand. And you wear the girdle of truth. I am telling you, you've got to equip yourself in every way to walk this new walk. You cannot take it lightly. Now, the way that woman fought for that man multiplied. And that's the attitude. You should come in with a killer instinct. I will kill anything try to get between me and God. Not literally. Okay. Yeah. That's your attitude against the devil. And guess what? That's your attitude against self. God bless you with a conviction that's worth dying for. And a conviction, better yet, that's worth living for. That you will go in and destroy the enemy so that you can go out and possess your land in the Lord. God bless you on your new journey.